The Nintendo Switch is too damn small in handheld mode, said no one ever. Which is why what we have here today, kind of interesting, definitely unique, something I did not expect to be able to take a look at. Today we are going to check out the Orion gaming display, and this is designed for the Nintendo Switch and Switch OLED to give you a huge 11.6 inch IPS monitor to play off of. I'm not sure about this one, folks. Hey, everybody. Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what we have here today. Now, the folks from Orion, and I will probably call them Team Orion more than a couple of times. From an RC standpoint, Team Orion, multi-time national and world champion in the world of radio control batteries, motors, and speed controllers. So if you hear me say Team Orion, this is what I'm talking about, just force of habit. But Orion, or the Orion team, shall we say, ah, they reached out to us to ask if we wanted to check out their 11.6 inch anti-glare monitor designed again for the Switch and the Switch OLED. Now, generally speaking, if I'm going to review a product, I don't watch videos on the topic from other YouTubers and content creators. I'll admit, I saw part of Rich over at Review Tech's review of this. So I kind of know a little bit of what I am looking at going into it. I apologize for that. I'm going to try hard as I can not to repeat anything that Rich said. But what we're going to do, we're going to see how it comes out of the box. We're going to check the fitment, see what you need to get up and playing with it, and play some games. Let me know from your standpoint, though, the one thing I am most curious on, have you ever wished that you had a larger display from handheld mode for the Switch or the Switch OLED? Let's take a closer look. Okay, I have to admit, this is the most ridiculous thing ever, and I love it. So, again, here's the box for the Orion gaming display. It's an 11.6-inch IPS anti-glare monitor. Uh, QR code where you can get to their website to check out more. Compatible with all HDMI-capable mobile gaming and video hardware devices. That's a lot. Uh, so, basically, Switch, PS5, Xbox Series X, Series S, along with uh, PC as well. Uh, nothing really on that side. So they're claiming that you will have an improved audio experience, uh, ergonomic comfort grips, audio output on the back, so headphones, uh, corded headphones, wired headphones, corded, duh. Uh, it does have a built-in kickstand. Uh, Switch's new home has controller mounts on the side, HDMI input, which is right about there, uh, and then it is USB powered, so no built-in battery pack. That's um, that's kind of a bummer. Gonna, gonna can't lie about that. So on here, are the specifications, the dimensions are right here, as you see. Uh, it is an 11.6 IPS anti-glare uh, connectivity, USB Type C and HDMI. The speaker is a two and a half watt uh, adapter input voltage Type C power delivery. 5 volt, 15 volt, Nintendo Switch power supply, adapter not included, compatibility, Switch and HDMI devices, headphone out with a 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack, DC rating is 5 volt, amp and a half, or 15 volt, 2.6 amp, and that is basically what the Switch default power supply is. All right, I got to look at this. I, I just, I've, I've been waiting for a while. There's the manual, which we'll set aside well packed uh we'll say that this is really well packed our foam there there's something in here not sure oh those feel like the grips nothing on that side you know what i like that they include this carry case uh that's really a nice touch i was not expecting that set the carry case aside in just a moment but yeah that'll carry everything over oh, there's some additional doodads in here what do we got uh, not sure, so we're going to set those aside. Keychain? Okay. Plastic, or, uh, some screws. I'm sure those are to connect the grips on the side to the case itself. Very well put together, I will say that, as far as just the overall packaging. Um, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Here you have it, and as I expected, it doesn't have the, uh, the rails or the grips on the side, so we'll have to connect those here in a second. I'm pretty sure that's what these are here. Or at least the outer half of the rail. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. So single screw point there. And attaches right like a so. 
So if this only uses one screw, they included some spares for you, which is a nice touch. They did not have to do that. So you basically have to thread into here, put the grip on, and then it slides forward, it looks like, to lock it into place. Yep, that's exactly it. And then the set screw will hold it there. Wow, that's a tight thread going into there. I realize I'm probably in the minority. I would rather have an Allen wrench for this than a flat blade screwdriver, especially if the flat blade is going to be that huge. Huge. And then here you can see a little bit more close up how you have the slots and then the tabs that basically slide into place to lock you in. There's that. Slide over. So the, the extra grip and everything on the screw actually appears to be around the plastic here on the grip versus the threads actually on the base of the unit. Oh, that's, that's painful. All right, so we've got everything threaded in here now. I'm half wondering if the other side isn't cross-threaded. That's going to suck if that's the case, but that's... That's, that's so ridiculous. Let's peel off the plastic covering here. And it tore the plastic. Tear off tab. Ugh. All right. How am I going to get this off now? There we go. Got a little bit of a static shock with that. Let's take a look at this. So we've got our kickstand on the back. You've got HDMI. It looks like HDMI in. USB-C in an eject mechanism for your switch to go in here. All right, let's set that there and let's take a look at the instruction manual. Oh, even has in here too how to go ahead and mount everything properly for your switch, which is a good thing. Oh, hey, so if I would have read the manual first, I would see that this isn't just a keychain. This is to, uh, basically it's your screwdriver to go ahead and install those screws. So we'll check those in a little bit and also confirmation that it does have basically two additional screws that come with it and then here it just shows you how you attach the joy cons to the rail built-in kickstand nintendo switch uh console dock a compartment your hdmi in port headphone port on the other side uh function keys up on the top didn't even notice that so up top here you have your uh, power, volume, and then you have a menu button and a source select button. So good to know. Setting it up here, so lay it on a clean, dry surface facing down. Line the USB-C port with your switch face down towards the console dock. Uh, push the switch console firmly into place. Ensure nothing will interfere with the cover and your switch is fully mounted to the USB-C mail jack. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, power source uh, provide... Uh, Power to Orion display as well to, to charge your Nintendo Switch and Joy-Con controllers. Attach your Joy-Con controller to the sides of the Orion screen to charge. Has a removable strap here for your you know, holding on your battery pack. Insert straps, attach USB battery source. So portable power, UpSwitch recommends using only battery packs sold on UpSwitch.com. Using any other battery pack may cause damage to your Orion. Okay. Tethered Power Orion is compatible with your Nintendo Switch Power Adapter. Nintendo Switch Power Adapter can power Orion display when using other HDMI compatible devices. So to power on the display, solid blue Orion and Nintendo Switch are powered on. Flashing blue is sleep or standby mode. Flashing amber Nintendo Switch is turned on but no USB-C power input. So it sounds like you 100% without a doubt have to have a power supply that it cannot draw power off of your Switch. Um, all right, let's go ahead, let's get this sucker ready to go. And it still doesn't tell me what these other two dealios here are for. I wonder if it's for the Switch, the original Switch, not sure. So let's go ahead and get things loaded in here. These are my Joy-Cons off of my Switch OLED. Let's connect that one there, connect this one right there. This is quite possibly the most ridiculous thing I've ever held in my life. But it's actually not that bad. Um, 
if anything, I kind of wish the grips were a little thicker. Um, it could use a little bit of extra on there. So we're going to go ahead and place it face down. You know what I'm going to do? I don't like having it face down here on the photo booth. So we're going to use the protective case that comes with face down. And one thing I absolutely want to double and triple check here, the orientation of the switch. So the switch gets laid in face down in here. Um, I wish this was a more rubberized material, uh, but we'll take what we can get. I do like this little tab in here, so it'll be easy to pop that up. But like I said, I wish there was some kind of a, a foam rubber material to protect the switch uh, face as it's in here. Now, I do have an extreme, two. I think this is 2,000 milliamp? No, uh, 10,000 milliamp. <laughs> Even better! Uh, rechargeable battery that we're going to use here. Now, one thing of note, they did have their recommendation that everyone should use, you know, whatever that manufacturer's battery pack was. You know what? I'm just going to be honest here. Nobody's actually going to do that. So if this actually needs that specific battery or battery from that manufacturer, um, that is something that, quite frankly, nobody's going to do. They're just not going to do it. Now we're going to go ahead and plug in our USB-C cable from here somewhere, right there, to here, to power everything. Now one thing, like I mentioned, I did watch Richard Review Tech's video and I completely agree with. If you're not going to include a power supply, you're not going to include a battery, at least give me a cable, you know? I mean, that's just... I'd really like if they would do that. And I'm actually going to put the excess cable underneath the hook and loop here. Can't call it Velcro because that's actually a trademark name, uh, but it is without a doubt hook and loop, or loop and hook if you prefer. This thing is ridiculous and awesome at the same time. So I'm going to move the uh, carry case there. We're going to pop out the kickstand, at least for our initial testing bits here. Power it on. Blue light is on up top. There's our Orion logo. Took it a second to, to recognize the left Joy-Con for some oddball reason. Let's give you a little bit better shot. So looking at the display here, we're going to just go through the menu real quick. So uh, that's the source or select menu button. Oh my goodness, this is like the portable monitors. So we're going to turn up the brightness here. Oop. I don't think the uh, the brightness really is doing a whole lot here. I have no idea what DCA or ODR picture mode. You can have standard. Game, which is what we're going to want. Movie, standard. We're going to go game. Signal source USB-C, reset. You can adjust the height position and transparencies of this menu. Color temp is either normal, cool, user adjustable, warm, normal, cool, back to user. I actually kind of like user the best, so we're going to stay with that to begin with. Aspect ratio either wide. I don't like this menu setup. Or there's a 4x3 if you need it. Alright, that's that's the basic menu on here. So let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of gameplay to actually see how it looks and sounds, because I'm I'm genuinely curious at this. I don't know why, but I am feeling like there's some lag or delay, at least when the Joy-Cons first wake up as it were. Now my understanding is that the Joy-Cons are not being charged uh, while they are in here. Let us check out, you know what I want to check out first of all? Touch. Touch screen does not work, so something to be aware of. And lag, latency, display for me, Street Fighter is always like one of my absolute go-tos. Yeah, that didn't sound good. We're doing Ryu versus Guile. Overall.
overall, I have to say, pretty responsive. I, I can't actually complain about it. I'm not digging... Uh, not digging the speakers. Um, especially on the Switch OLED. Um, the audio is so good that I don't think that this really matches the quality that the Switch OLED is capable of out of the box. Got him. That felt much more difficult than it needed to be, though. Yeah, it's okay. No major lag issues that I'm feeling. The, the image is definitely soft. We're going to turn down the volume here a little bit. Wow, that took forever for it to realize that I was turning the volume down. Um, you know, one of those things where I, I just think the the onboard volume on the Switch OLED is terrific, and these speakers, not quite up to the task. Now, compared to the original Switch, pretty similar. Um, I don't know that me playing this long-term, holding it like this, is something that I would be comfortable doing. Now we're going to fire up some TMNT, the Kawabunga Collection, and we're going to play the vastly superior to the um, knockoff Hyperstone Heist. We're going to play Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. This thing's just so massively heavy. I, I, I can't see playing this in handheld mode for very long without getting fatigued. Now, the vibration just worked on the Joy-Cons without any issue there. Now, that is clearly something built into the Joy-Cons themselves and has nothing to do with the Orion. This game is just so much better than Hyperstone Heist. I mean, don't get me wrong, Hyperstone Heist is okay if you've got nothing else to play, if you're, you know, a hobbit or something. Uh, but Turtles in Time absolutely love this game. Blow it up, sir! I know my friend Chris Springup and I, we played so much of this when we were kids. I don't know that we ever beat it. If we didn't, we, we came awfully close. Okay, works great for the Switch, but now what I want to do is let's test out some of the multimedia capability of it, first of all. Let's just, I'm going to go to my YouTube channel, play some of my own stuff, see how it looks and sounds. Overall, this looks and sounds pretty decent. I mean, nothing nothing to write home about offensively or positively, quite honestly. I, I think it gets the job done, but if I'm going to use something that's this size, why would I not just use my tablet, you know? Um, but for what it is, it's not terrible, but it's still a soft image. So up next, we fired up our Xbox One S and... Uh, we're going to see how it looks through here. We are using the HDMI port on the side. Uh, thanks to the folks from Huom for sending us some awesome HDMI cables, which we are using here. Actually, we'll kind of kill two birds with one stone here. We'll see how an 8-bit game being played through a... What the hell? I don't even know what uh, the bit count on an Xbox Series S would be. Or 1S, 1S. Good God. I hate their naming structure. I don't like the fact that I have to keep pressing the down button on volume. That I can't just hold it down and have it work. Overall, I mean, not playing too terribly bad here. There we go. Looks pretty good to me as well. Yeah, I can't really complain about the responsiveness of the... Uh, the monitor in and of itself as a straight up gaming monitor it's it's doing everything that it should be doing all right so there's the xbox i don't know that i've ever mentioned it but i actually own a jvc xi it's it's you know one of the, the things that i should probably talk about more here on the channel um, but we do have it hooked up and playing our master system games actually through an adapter so let's play some Sonic the Hedgehog for the Master System. I mean, this actually works pretty good. This is something where if I was setting up a booth at a convention, I may bring with me to have hooked up to, uh, you know, demo games or whatever if, if people want to test things out before they buy it. What I really like about this versus some of the other portable monitors that I've tested, and that's really 
what I'm kind of comparing it to at this point is the fact that it uses full-size HDMI and not mini or micro HDMI. Um, that is a welcome addition to this. Uh, overall, what do I think of this? Um, I think the games are responsive. They look decent. Um, is there room for improvement? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, for what this is, this actually works pretty, pretty well. I think the colors are a little bit muted and not as rich as they could be. And I'm not a huge fan of the onboard speakers. Um, this, quite honestly, is simply one of those portable monitors in a shell and shroud that also has the capability to connect Joy-Cons to it. Let's, let's just be honest about that. Um, I don't like either looking at the one side... Uh, on this side here, when I threaded on that side, when I threaded the screw into it, I'm like, man, it feels like I'm cross-threading it. And basically what it was, was the uh, the hole for the screw is not aligned the way that it should be. So it gives the feeling of cross-threading, but it's basically just due to poor alignment between the uh, molded point for the screw hole and where the screw needed to pass through. Um, it's heavy. This thing is a beast. Um, there's, there's no other way to, to say that. Um, and it's one of those things that, uh, for its design or intended design of basically being a handheld Uber switch, uh, shall we call it? Um, it, for me, I will not use this in a true handheld mode simply because. It is so blasted heavy. This is something that is it a solution in looking, in, you know, looking for a problem. Um, I don't know that I've ever felt the need to have a switch this side. Oh, blast it! Um, but the fact that I now have it, will I use it? Maybe occasionally. Maybe occasionally. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. So there you have our look at the Orion 11.6 inch gaming display. What do I think about it? First of all, this thing's ridiculous. It just is. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's awkward. It's bulbous. It's wide. And I kind of love it. Um, a few things about it, though, I will say. First and foremost, for as large as it is, this thing is heavy as well. So that is something to keep in mind. I do also wish that the grips were a little bit thicker and maybe kicked out a little bit more. Um, these feel a little bit on the slim side, which is weird to say with something this large. Um, I will also say that I was a bit disappointed in the fact that the molding on the hand grips, the hole for the screw to pass through, did not align very well with the threaded part that's in the main body itself that was a bit of a disappointment. I'll also say, you know, echo something that I saw on Rich's video as well. For what you're paying here, for what this is, there's no battery included, no power supply, not even a USB cable. One of those things, if not all three, should be in the box with this. Um, I'll also say, so this is a 10,000 milliamp battery, and we've had the display on for about 30 minutes total with filming, with everything we've had going on here. It's now down to 81%. So. You figure 30 minutes, 20% on a 10,000 milliamp battery, you can kind of do the math yourself as far as how long that you would expect on this. Um, I did not like the fact that the volume control, you can't just hold it down and have it go up or down. You have to press the button each and every time. Speaking of volume, the built-in mic or built-in speakers on this, eh. Um, and part of that is because they upgraded, they, Nintendo pronouns, pal, upgraded the speakers built into the Switch OLED, and they sound fantastic. Uh, they blow the original Switch out of the water. They blow this out of the water as well. I do wish that there'd be some way that you could just have the audio pass through, come through the Switch versus coming through what's built into here because the built-in speakers, not terribly great. Things that are great about it. First and foremost, the fact that you can use it as an external monitor on a laptop, but also with things like I showed you with an Xbox Series S, One S, uh, and other systems, that it is a standard size HDMI port versus on a lot of these smaller type screens, you do get a mini or a micro HDMI port. You've got to use an adapter. Those things are a pain 
to deal with. The kickstand is robust. It is really, really good. And it is something that holds the system very well. Um, also on here too, I never heard the fans, although the fans just kicked out on my AC, the fans never kicked on in the switch. So that told me that, well, the switch may have been working hard to output a display that it wasn't being confined, condensed, the heat being overly saturated into the system itself. That was a good thing. Something I did not expect either was the carry case. This is a nice addition on here. And then having the little keychain screwdriver thing, kind of nice too. Is this something that I would use on a daily basis? No. I don't even know necessarily that I will use this when I'm traveling. This to me is less of a handheld device and more of an exceptional tabletop or desktop device. It's all in one, takes care of everything, but you still need that external power supply, which kind of negates some of the benefit on here. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know too, how much you love Yoshi's Story for the Nintendo 64, one of our favorite games on the platform. And our good friend Jay over at Square Pegs absolutely loves this game as well. Now, if you are looking for other videos on the Switch, Switch accessories and more, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com, as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode, and I cannot wait to see you again soon.